Tell me if this describes you. Uh, you woke up today, you went right to your instrument, you practiced, you practiced everything you were supposed to practice, and you left feeling like, wow, that was great. I can do this every day for the rest of my life with no problems. And if that's how you feel, that's awesome. I'm actually really envious of that. But this is not gonna be a conversation for you. This is gonna be a conversation for if maybe you haven't always felt uh, so motivated to get your instrument first thing in the morning, maybe it hasn't happened for a couple weeks, maybe it's been months, and you're not really quite sure what's going on with uh, you know, why you haven't spent time doing the thing that you tell yourself you love. Josh Friedman is a brilliant musician who has been a hugely important part of my life for the last 15 years. I've been in bands with him for as long as I've been in bands, and I've learned so much from him as we've grown up together. One of the most impressive things about Josh is how he is able to be incredibly supportive as a producer and band member for many artists, while also taking the helm as a charismatic and stunning frontman in his own project, That One-Eyed Kid. Josh is a deep dude and has a lot of wisdom to share with us about being productive and improving as artists. Let's see what he has to say. I think there are a lot of tutorials and videos out uh, on YouTube that show you how to do lots of things when you're actually at your instrument. And there should be also a conversation about what happens if you can't get to your instrument. So I know for me, there have been lots of different things that get in the way of me and working on my music. If there's a week or a you know, month or whatever where I haven't slept very well or um, ate very well or exercised, um, you know, just things that have to do with taking care of your body, that also has a huge impact on my motivation to do lots of things, including working on music. One of the things that gave me this awareness and an interest in taking care of my body and how that relates to my practice um, kind of has to do with my personal experience with disease. Um, you know, when I was 14, I had cancer, and they had to take out everything in this orbital bone um, in order to make sure the cancer didn't spread. And there are lots of things that I walked away from that experience um, thinking and feeling. But one of the biggest things as it relates to my life as a musician is, um, you know, it kind of made me go face to face with what does your body have to do with your life? And what does taking care of your body have to do with your life? And so since I was 14, I've always had an interest and a desire to learn about my body, learn about how taking care of my body is uh, affecting all parts of my life, but that includes uh, my time at my instrument and writing and composing and producing. When I've been taking care of my brain and my body, I make the most stuff and the best stuff. And when I'm not doing that, I make zero stuff. So one of the areas I have to check in on all the time is anxiety, because I get that from my family. For me, that gets in the way of my process a lot. The more I get a lid on my own specific cocktail of anxiety, the easier it's been for me to have more time working on something that I love to do without getting this unwanted distraction. I had this episode last fall that it had never happened to me before where I was doing this gig and it was at an odd time of day and there was just an odd crowd there and I had like not really eaten much and I drank too much coffee on an empty stomach. So all these things kind of boiled together and I was on stage and I'm pretty sure I was having what I've been described to as the beginning stages of a panic attack. And it was insane. I mean, I just remember feeling like I had to get out of this room. It was like closing in on me that if I didn't get a cup of water right before we started playing that I was gonna lose my mind. I mean, it was really bonkers. That's as bad as it's gotten for me, anxiety wise. Lots of people have it way worse than that. But there are some things that I do that help me to kind of keep an eye on it. This is what I did on stage to uh, stop what I felt like was gonna be a panic attack going uh, full blown. This is like a guy telling you stuff on the internet, so you should find out whatever works for you, for sure. Maybe by 
working with a mental health professional, but I'll tell you what works for me. We're gonna do a breathing exercise. And uh, this is just a way for you to fill your lungs up with a lot of air and then control the release of it. Cause this is something that we don't tend to do when we're in fight or flight mode. Like when you're on stage and having a panic attack, your breaths look a lot like this, <sighs> like chest and shoulders moving up and down. Not good for your heart. You sit up nice and tall. And you're just gonna try and get a breath that moves from your belly. So when you're getting an inhale, your belly moves out. And when you exhale, your belly moves in. And you don't wanna move your chest and shoulders that much because it's gonna not make your diaphragm movement as uh, strong. And you're just gonna try and do that uh, in a way that lasts your inhale for three seconds and your exhale for like six seconds. And you just repeat that. And if you do that for about a minute, you average like 10 seconds for each of those cycles. Um, it's a way that lowers your heart rate. It relaxes your muscles a little bit. And it's just been hugely helpful for me. It's a really small thing. And again, there are issues that are much bigger for some people's anxieties that this does not address. But in terms of ways to check in on these little things with your mental health, your physical health, having a breathing exercise is something that you can do anywhere at any time. So another common struggle that I have uh, is that I don't finish stuff. There are times where I've been working on an album or producing on someone's record where I have lots of starts to pieces or songs and I just keep starting stuff and starting stuff and I just never really pull the trigger on finishing it. That's a pretty broad thing to address. And this isn't necessarily gonna be the silver bullet that's gonna make you finish all your songs. I think the thing that helps me keep a lid on that the most is some kind of mindfulness practice. Paying attention to what your body and what your mind is experiencing, but you're kind of withholding judgment or action on it. For instance, if you were to just sit there in a chair for 15 minutes and you're just trying to breathe and not really think about anything, guess what? You're gonna think about lots of stuff. But the idea is that when you have these thoughts, you're not like chasing them, you know, you're not like hopping into the car as it's driving. You're just kind of noticing the car as it's passing. And so a practice like that has been really helpful for me when it comes to finishing work, because if I think about a piece that I'm working on and what's holding me back from finishing it, if I'm being real honest about thoughts that come in, usually there's a thought there that's like, you're not good enough. It's gonna suck when you finish it. Uh, Everyone's gonna hate you. Like it's these crazy grotesque uh, exaggerations of things that never would happen. And so the practice of noticing that thought and going like, you know what? It's just thoughts, it's not reality. That's hugely important. And it allows you to kind of be like, oh, look at me. I'm just real concerned about this because you're concerned about stuff you love. This is mindfulness practice, by the way. It's not just mindfulness concept. And there's a reason I'm calling it that because you have to practice it. I have to practice it. If I stop doing a mindfulness practice, guess what? I hop into those cars way quicker. In one study with transcendental meditation, it took a population of people who were suffering from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and they studied what happened to them once they started practicing TM and they, people who practice it did a lot better. There's some, stigma around talking about things like meditating and mindfulness and yoga and you think like oh you have to be this like smelly guy with a long beard who drinks kombucha to do all this stuff i am that but you don't have to be that just have a general awareness of where you are in any given day of what your brain and your body are doing and how that affects your practice the better i feel the better i practice no way to touch me don't even try I could have stopped my brakes and engines all on fire I can't go slower I can't go back Got big ol' aspirations, get what